Well, the weather is cold, but the people are warm. They have received us with, uh, in a very warm way. So we have not felt the cold in Korea. Well, first of all, we are very excited on being in Korea. It's a country that we admire a lot. Korea has shown in the past decades how countries through hard work and discipline can grow but also can improve the quality of life of their citizens through innovation, through uh, economic growth and also through values like democracy, human rights and the pursuit of peace. So for us uh, it's a great example and we are happy to be part now of OECD with Korea as another member that we can work together in, in that forum with the same values. And also it's a great gift that that happened uh, in the same year as our bicentennial anniversary of an independent country. Well, the biggest accomplishment after s almost 60 years of bilateral relation, I believe has happened during this visit where President Moon and myself, we have agreed to upgrade the level of partnership between our two countries. And now we have an integral, comprehensive association for joint action. And that level of partnership means that we were going to be working together, the, co the two countries, on the same values, human rights, democracy, sustainability, and the pursuit of peace, but also in specific areas, such as technology, innovation, the film industry, tourism, and uh, sustainability. So that joint action will allow us to work bilaterally, but also expanding the influence of Korea in Central America and the Caribbean, working from Costa Rica to take action to other places in America. Well, uh, the Korean uh, New Deal, the Green Deal and the Digital Deal are very aligned with our own decarbonization plan for 2050. Both plans change uh, how we see the economy in terms of making it more sustainable but also at the same time creating more jobs and creating more wealth for our societies. So it's a win-win situation of having sustainability for this generation and the next generation but also having growth. And both plans are aligned so this means we can work together to make things happen. And for example, Costa Rica has shown how to reverse deforestation in the past years. Korea has done a wor great work on that as well. Costa Rica has a electric renewable green uh, matrix and grid. Our electricity is 99.5% clean and renewable. And we are looking for Korean technology, for example, in transportation in order to eliminate our fossil fuels in transportation. So there are many areas in which we can work together. Well, we are looking to absolutely abolishing the usage of fossil fuels and also the exploration for fossil fuels. And for us, it's a, it's a matter of ethics, but also a matter of future growth. It's a matter of ethics, because if humanity do not stop using fossil fuels, there won't be a planet for our generation and for our children and grandchildren. So can you imagine the impact of losing our planet? So it's so urgent to stop using fossil fuels. But at the same time, we have found that all their sources of energy are more profitable more, not only sustainable, but are more profitable for societies. So it's a win-win situation. 
we are pushing for this new legislation to absolutely prohibit exploitation and exploration of fossil fuels in Costa Rica. And yes, we have had resistance, but we also know we are on the right side of history in this struggle. Well, vaccination in Costa Rica has been positive first because we, our scientists, work together with our diplomacy so we could have access rapidly to vaccines. So even though we signed the agreement with COVAX, we also early on, before, even before the vaccines were approved by EMA or the FDA, we have agreement signs with Pfizer and AstraZeneca because we knew it was necessary to have vaccines to end uh, the pandemic. So that helped us a lot. Also, there is a national culture of vaccination. More than 90% of the people express that they are willing to get vaccinated. And that is because we have a universal healthcare system and people are very used to using vaccines. From what I've seen in Korea, you have a very good level as well. So we congratulate uh, ourselves, both Costa Rica and Korea, for the work we are doing. We also thank Korea because very early on during the pandemic, Korea was one of the first countries to reach out to provide help to Costa Rica. And we really thank that. And we keep cooperating in that sense. Costa Rica launched an initiative with the Organization for uh, Health with Dr. Tidros to create what's called a voluntary repository of technologies. So there anyone can deposit intellectual property or technologies for treatments, therapies uh, to make it available anywhere in the planet. So Costa Rica put forward that proposal and that is working as well. But it's true that the cooperation between Korea and Costa Rica during the pandemic has been very close. Maybe, well, shall we move on to more exciting culture <laughs> <laughs> exchange? Thing? Whatever you say. Okay. Well, well, actually, I believe you had a you are having a nice time trying out some Korean food like kimchi and soju. You said you love it. Well, about the next question, our coworker and. Elias Molina, yes. he will be asking you. Hello, yes. You said you love kimchi and soju. Which Korean singer or TV drama you like? And have you seen Squid Game? Well, uh, being here, I have tried the Korean beer, which is really good. Uh, actually, on singers, I'm acquainted of many of the of the K-pop bands, but I have to say they are not, uh, I believe I'm not the, the, the market for that. I'm not the, the age market. But I know that young people in Costa Rica love listening to, to, to K-pop, and that's very exciting to say. And one thing I have to say is that uh, through the online platforms, uh, many Costa Ricans are watching different TV shows uh, produced from Korea. For example, my parents, they have seen many films or television series from Korea. Actually, when I told my parents that I was coming to Korea, my mom said she wanted me to buy her one of those nice creams for the night that she sees on Korean television. And also my dad said, I would like to have one of that, those nice green bottles I see on the TV shows of Korea. But they say that one nice thing about the, the, the television things they, they see is how in the films there is a strong respect to the elderly. They say they also like how in the, in the, in the series, uh, there's a, a culture of respect and also culture of hard work uh, and that they really like those, those series, particularly the ones that are romantic. So that's the feedback from my, from my parents. On my side, I have to say that I, I've seen the uh, Oscar award winning movie called Parasite 
and also I have seen uh, Squid Game. And I have to stress the quality of the production. Uh, actually, in Costa Rica, we recently signed a, a new law to, in, to foster national production. And we would love to partner with Korea. Can you imagine a film made both in Costa Rica and in landscapes in, Co uh, in, landscapes in Costa Rica and in Korea? That will be something unique for the world. That's the kind of things that I believe we should be working together. But we uh, do admire the film uh, and television industry of this country. Well, 72 years ago in Costa Rica, uh, we as a country decided to abolish the armed forces. Obviously, it's a very different context, like the context in the peninsula. But for us, that helped us build a, a culture of peace. At the time, it was said that it was impossible to survive without having an standing army. But then again, 72 years afterward, here we are. And that helped us decrease the investment on military and increase the investment on healthcare and education. Also, that uh, made us not to fall into dictatorships like in Latin America, both right-wing and left-wing dictatorships, and that helped the country and that strengthened democracy. Costa Rica is the oldest democracy in Latin America, uninterrupted. Sometimes people say that uh, they told us that's, that's going to be impossible, and it became impossible. But when I see the example of Korea, after 1953, people will say it will be impossible to advance in a peace process. But in the last couple of years, there has been huge steps towards peace that Korea has accomplished. And thanks a lot to the policies of the President Moon. F our DNA in Costa Rica is to support peace. And we are supporting the peace process in Korea and also the process to um, denuclearize the peninsula. We imagine a world that instead of investing in nuclear power, we will be investing in innovation and human development and investing to fight the biggest threat there is in the planet, which is climate change. So instead of using resources on that, using those resources to change the world in a positive way. So my commitment and our government commitment towards uh, Korea is to fully support the peace process because we do believe in that. Well, one of the, gr the things I want to accomplish in the next months is to complete the goal of the high ambition coalition in Costa Rica. In 2019, Costa Rica launched with France and the UK the High Ambition Coalition for Nature and People. It's what's called the 3030, 30 by 30. That means protecting 30% of the land and 30% of the ocean by 2030. In the case of Costa Rica, this year we're going to protect 30% of Costa Rica's ocean. Scientists says that these nature-based solutions are the ones that are going to help address climate change, but also protect biodiversity. Costa Rica, some say it's a small country, but one needs to know that the territory of Costa Rica, it's only 8% of its full territory. 92% of Costa Rica its ocean because of the Cocos Island. So by protecting 30% of our ocean, we'll be protecting an area that's equivalent to three times our land territory. It's huge. But this is going to be a great gift for Costa Rica and future generations and for all the world's future generations because protecting that area is a way to address climate change 
and protect biodiversity for the generations to come. So that goal is one of the last things I'm going to do before leaving office. 30 by 30, high ambition coalition. I appreciate that. Yeah. That was said to be impossible as well. When we started in 2019, it was only five countries. But in Glasgow, a couple of weeks ago, 2021, mm -hmm. there are already 76 countries being part of the High Ambition Coalition. India mm -hmm. has announced to be part of it. And also, most recently, Madagascar is going to be part of it. Mm -hmm. So this movement is going to, through conservation and nature-based solutions, pursue to protect the planet, fix carbon, and help reverse climate change. We're working in many fields with Korea because even though we are far away in our values and in our views of the world, we are very close. We are very close. I'm sure if Koreans go to Costa Rica, and experience the Pura Vida, they will feel very close to Costa Rica, and some perhaps might not want to return. <laughs>